Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I'm going to show off what I'm pretty sure is the smallest memory cell that's possible in current redstone mechanics. So, I've got 8 bytes of it already set up here, and a single cell in this is 2 wide, 2 long, and 13 blocks tall. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and eh, oh. Well, okay, my example of was in the 14th block, the whole memory's ruined, but you get the idea. It's 2x2x13, two by two by it's pretty small, it's pretty fast, and I like it. So, let's go ahead and just show this off. I'm going to save something to slot 1, and save something else to slot 2, and, predictably enough, if I read from the first slot, I get the first data I saved, and if I read from the second slot, I get the second piece of data I saved. So, yeah. It's a pretty cool memory cell, and I like it. One of the cool features about this, at least I think, is even though it's 2x2, two two, this is actually instant read. So, as you see, I've got all the E setup so that when I put the turners off, then it reads, and... Uh, okay, well, I have a repeater there just for all my example levels to look nice. I know, whole thing's ruined again, but still, you get the idea. It's instant read, so even though it's 2x2, two two, you can still have really fast reading. I like that. Another feature about it that's pretty cool, even though some people may love it and some people may hate it, is it has something that I like to call continual read. And here's sort of how that works. So, just for sake of example, let's say I'm going to be using a counter program on a computer. So I'm going to save 5 to memory slot 1. And let's say I'm going to count by that, just for sake of example. So I saved 5, I'm reading it, sending it to the CPU, doing whatever. Now let's say I have some new data. Normally I'd have to use an extra memory slot to save this somewhere, because otherwise it would override the counter data, and that's bad. But what continual read lets you do is I can save this data to this same memory slot, and it will keep reading the old data until I update the read command again. And if you use it right, that can be very useful, because you essentially get a free extra memory slot. I can use all the rest of my memory for something else, and I can do all the counting, both reading and writing, in the same memory slot. Now, if you don't like this, then it's okay. The easy fix is you just send this a one-tick pulse, or whatever you want, every time you save. And then it'll update it every time, and you don't need to worry about it. But that can be used for some pretty cool things. So, there you go. And yeah, I thought I'd show that off. So... Now that I think I've thoroughly showed this thing off, let me go ahead and show you how to build this thing. So, I'm going to start with the data wire. It's going to start with a little bit of a stagger, because I'm going to have my right wire right here. But yeah. Now under here, I'm going to place my piston. And this is going to be the piston that gets the block update in, well, when I write. So. That's sort of the way this thing works. I can have some data, so I have one right now. Hit this, and it doesn't an update. And you might be wondering, well, that's kind of useless. Yeah, and that's because if I had a normal block here, this would also update the piston behind it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a non-sticky piston, and that's going to be what updates it. So now I can write only to the a block, only to the piston, that's in this memory row. And yeah, so there you go. Got nice controlled block update. And from here, I'm going to start working on the read system. So I'm going to go two blocks down, and right here, I'm going to have my read piston. And this is going to also work with a block update. So, going to save some data, just to get that sort of working, I guess. And, you know, since this doesn't have to have instant read, I'll go ahead and show you the non-instant read first. So, if you don't want instant read, what you want to do is you want to have 
wire going like this, and that should update it, yeah, and a torch. And this will essentially be the read system. Now all I have to do is have a block right here, have something powering it, you can use a torch or a redstone block, either way, and then there you go, there's your output. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 2 by 2 by 13. And let's go ahead and give an example. So right now I have 1, writ well, right now I have 0 written since it takes an inverted input. So if I try reading, nothing happens. But if I save, then I try reading, I get 1. And there you go. And if you don't like the stagger on the out or read wire there, you can also just do wire like this and get the same effect. So whichever way makes you happy. And yeah, there you go. That's how you build one cell without instant read, just in case you don't like that. It still has continual read though, so yeah. And to show you the instant read version, I went ahead and made two more and sort of array off screen because the instant read has a little bit of a stagger going for it. So it goes a little bit something like this. Instead of the read wire being right here, the read wire is going to be a little bit lower, like right here. So there. And now this will have absolutely no effect on any of the pistons. So the way this works is you have one here and one here. And you just sort of have blocks to sort of block it off. So I'd keep going, I'd have a block here, then I'd go two more, and go up one, and etc, etc. So this one would go right here, and have a block up, and block like this. And this right here, I'm pretty sure can just tile, so you could just take, so you could ignore this part, I just have that just for example, and tile like that. And yeah. So there you go. Instant read. Well, I use levers to show that off, so... Actually, I could have levers right here. What am I doing? So yeah, now I can save some data. So I'll save this one here, and I'll save 2 on right here. And I can go ahead and read, so boom. There's some data. And I'll put a repeater to make it a little bit more obvious. So, there, and there. Instant read. So yeah, you can use either way, it really doesn't matter. And there you go. So that's the memory cell, that's how you build it. I guarantee you I'm not the first person to come up with a design like this. So, yeah, but I just wanted to go ahead and show it off, so maybe you can use it, maybe you can get some use out of this. And yeah, but before I go, there's exactly one more thing I want to do. A lot of people, for some reason, believe when you have the wire staggered like this, you can't have a repeater on it. So this is as much as you could possibly have, because you can't repeat the signal. If I try placing a repeater here, nothing happens. If I try placing a repeater here, sure it extends, but now I can't power that. There actually is a way, if you don't mind it being one higher for the signal extension, you can do something like this. You can have a piece of glowstone or half slab right there, so power can still travel down. Repeat it like this, and then just break this wire so it doesn't get an infinite loop. And there you go. It's repeater, works just fine. Only thing is it makes it one higher when you have the signal extension on it like that. But yeah, there you go. Just thought I'd go ahead and show that off. Still powers everything, and yeah. So there. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.